So far we've had a look at using the periodic table to work out how many valence electrons an element might have, so atoms of an element, and therefore their valency. So um, one thing we didn't talk about is whether they are metals or non-metals from that. Things that can gain or share electrons, so have four, five, six, seven electrons um, in their valence shell, they are considered to be non-metals or semi-metals. And because they can share electrons, they can form molecules. And molecules are things like H2O, where it is two hydrogens bound to one oxygen as a discrete particle or molecule. The bonding in between the atoms is covalent, the sharing of electrons so that they all have enough to fill their outer shell. Um, and that means that this thing, which is electrically neutral, can float around, as it were, can exist um, on its own. It doesn't need to be like an ionic substance. It doesn't have to be in a crystal with lots and lots of oppositely charged um, ions. The naming of these is quite tricky because a lot of them have got some common names like H2O is water. But luckily as chemists we can also give it sort of its, its proper chemistry name. And for that we need to learn some prefixes or things to go at the front of the words and a suffix. So a thing to go at the end. The thing to go at the front depends on the number of atoms. You can see here that the first element is hydrogen and there's two of them. So I call it di, so the two is di, hydrogen, there's one oxygen so it's mon, and because oxygen starts with a vowel, it's not mono, it's actually mon, and then oxide. So we change it from being oxygen to being oxide, a lot like if it was the oxide ion in an ionic compound. You might remember this in things like sulfur dioxide, sulfur trioxide, that sort of thing. And I'm going to go through a couple of examples um, shortly to show you what I mean with these things. So the ones we really need to learn are the, probably the first four, because they're not exactly what you'd expect, but then after that they become really easy. So one is mon or mono, two is di, so dihydrogen we had here, three is tri, which sort of makes sense, we know a triangle has three sides, four is tetra, okay, so and if it was oxide it would be tetroxide, you take the A off, which is why I put it in brackets, because oxide starts with a vowel. Then when you get to five, and every one after that, it's just the prefix for the shapes you'd expect. So a pentagon has five sides, five is penta. A hexagon has six sides, so six would be hex or hexa, that sort of thing. So, um, as I say, I'm going to go through a couple of examples, and we'll just show you how those names are created. So here we go. The first one's something that I'm hoping you've met before, so it's quite familiar to you. And we should know that the first element there is carbon. Now we don't need to write mon, monocarbon, we can just write carbon when there's only one of them for the first element. So we write carbon, then we see that it's got two oxides, so it's going to be dioxide. Notice that it's oxide, not oxygen. I've gone for one that you know, carbon dioxide, because it's so familiar. Now, this is chemically different to CO, even though they look very similar. And the name of this would be carbon monoxide. Now, both are poisonous to us, but CO is way more poisonous to us. And we'll learn about that in the structure and bonding a little bit. Um, because of what it does in our blood. So the di versus the mon for the oxygens is actually really important for us as chemists to know which one we're talking about. The next one is one of the two, <coughs> pardon me, one of the two chlorides of phosphorus. So again, non-metal, non-metal. So we start with phosphorus, the first element, and then we see that there's three, so it's tri, and then it's chlorine, so trichlor, and we end it with IDE, just like an ionic compound. So phosphorus trichloride. There is another one that's like this, called PCl5. So 5 instead of a 3, that would be phosphorus 
pentachloride. So we change that prefix in here to show the difference. And they are chemically a little different. So if this was carbon dioxide at the top, this of course must be sulfur dioxide. Sulfur for our first element. And yes it is an F now. You have to be really old school to use the pH now. Di for the two. Oxide for the oxygen being second. So the ide is our suffix for the second element. And again, I'll show you a slightly different one that's also pretty nasty stuff. These are both nasty chemicals. And this one would be sulfur with three oxygens would be trioxide. Right, the last one is to show you that things can get just a little bit tricky. So the, you'll notice there's two nitrogens and four oxygens. I need to actually say that there are two because there are lots of nitrogen oxides and they're all different in the way that they behave and so on. So we have to say that it is di nitrogen. I'm sorry, I'm going to use two colours here just to show you how I've done this. And because there's a four there, it would be tetra, but because it's oxygen and that starts with a vowel, it's tetroxide. It does have another name, this, but for now we're going to stick with this because this is the more systematic, or I guess correct, way to name this molecule. So that's how we name molecules. Just a reminder that we just need to remember some prefixes for the numbers of atoms. Um, and we need to change the suffix of the second atom to IDE, and we've got its systematic name. And this only is for things where it's non-metal with non-metal, or semi-metals like silicon.